Okay, so now we're going to learn about the basic parts of the eye. So we're going to start with the outside of the eye and work our way inside. So the first part of the eye that you need to be aware of is this big structure right here and this big structure right here. This is called the lacrimal gland, and this part is called the lacrimal duct. Now, lacrimal, remember the lacrimal bone, which was in here, uh, was one of the skull bones. It is based on the word lacrimose, meaning sad. So this is about tears. So the lacrimal gland makes the tears. The tears sweep across the front of the eye and then is going to be picked up by the lacrimal duct. And so that's the lacrimal duct that drains into the nasal cavity, which is why when you cry, your nose gets all runny. Now, if we take this part off, we'll see that surrounding the eyeball, we have these muscles. These are called the extrinsic muscles. And these muscles are gonna be pulling on the outside of the eyeball to get the eye to move up, down, left, right, every which way. And that's going to allow you to look left, right, up, and down. All right, so those are the extrinsic muscles. Surrounding the eye, we have this white outer layer called the sclera. Now the sclera is going to be very thick to act as a protection act as a protective layer, but it's also going to be white. And it's white because white reflects light. So as light comes in on the peripheral light on the outside, not the one you're look, thing you're looking at, but other light, it's going to bounce off. So we don't want light to enter the side of our eye. We want the only light we want to enter to come in through the front. So that's going to be the sclera, this big, thick, white section. At the very front of the eye, we have this big curved window called the cornea. The job of the cornea is going to be to bend that light, to refract it so that it enters the eye straight. The shape of the cornea determines how well you can really see. Um, so for example, if you are nearsighted or farsighted, the cornea doesn't really match the shape of your eye. And so uh, you can go and get some artificial corneas, right, to help refract that light and bend it the exact way that it needs to go. Or you can go and use a laser to shave that cornea. That's what LASIK surgery is, in order to get it to bend in just the right way. Right, so we have the sclera and we have the cornea. Now we're going to take off that outer layer, and what you're going to see is a layer of brown. This brown middle layer is going to be known as the choroid coat. And you can see that the choroid coat is going to be brown to help absorb light, because dark pigments absorb, all right? So this is going to absorb that light. Now you'll also notice that it's going to have all of these blood vessels. So that's gonna help nourish and uh, give nutrients to the eye. So the goal of the choroid coat is that once the light enters the eye and hits the back of the eye and we actually get the information we need, we need to absorb, soak up that light. We don't want it just bouncing around forever. And so that's going to be the job of the choroid coat. Right there in the center we have what for most people is considered the colored part of the eye. That's going to be the iris. Right? Now the iris is actually a muscle. It is a smooth muscle. And its job is to control how much light actually enters the eye. So we can dilate it, make it bigger. If we want more light to enter the eye, we can really contract it and tense it up to make sure that very little light enters the eye. But that determines how much light goes in. 
the hole that the light actually enters, that's going to be the pupil. And the pupil is then going to be able to be adjusted by the iris. All right. Now we're going to move, remove that layer. And what we're going to see here is we're going to have this really big plastic thing. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. But then we have this guy. This little disc right here. This little disc is the lens. Now the lens is going to be in charge of focusing, figuring out, okay, can you see close up, can you see far away, adjusting your focus, what's called accommodation. Alright, so we can accommodate our vision by adjusting this lens. And the way that that works is that the lens is going to be attached to ciliary muscles, they're red, on the model. These ciliary muscles are going to pull and tug at the lens to flatten it. And as it flattens the lens, it allows you to focus close up. So, for example, as you get older, the ciliary muscles tend to be weaker. They have a harder time pulling on the lens, which is why as you get older, even if you've had perfect vision, you still might need help reading things that are close up. You might need reading glasses because to see close up requires you to pull and stretch on your lens to get that accommodation. All right, now we get to the part that actually has all the information, the retina. This is where we actually see. The retina is going to be this back inside layer of the eye. And it's going to contain photoreceptors. Remember, photoreceptors are the nerves that get activated by light rays. So we're going to have these photoreceptors sitting in the retina. Now, there are actually two kinds of photoreceptors. We have rods and we have cones. Now, rods are going to help us see whether or not there is light at all. So they get activated just by light being there. Uh, so that's going to be the ones that help you in like dark vision, nighttime, night vision. They're going to be the ones to help you see whether or not there's light at all. Whereas cones, they're going to be responsible for telling you which wavelength of light. Now, if you know anything about light, the wavelength of light is what tells us what color we're looking at. Now, color, in our, it's actually a weird combination of signals pushed and meshed together in our brain, but it all comes from these cones. We have cones that respond to red wavelength, blue wavelength, and green wavelength. And our brain combines those signals to de determine which colors we're looking at. So that's going to be found, once again, in this back, in this model peach part called the retina. Now at the very center of our field of vision, if we're looking directly at something, it's going to hit a little spot of the retina called the fovea centralis. The center, right? So the fovea centralis, that's going to be our center of vision. That's where our vision is the sharpest. We're going to have the most cones there. So our idea of color is best when we're looking directly at something versus when we see it in the corner of our eye, we may know something is sort of green, but it's not until we look directly at it that we know the shade of green. At the very back of the retina, you're going to have the optic nerve. And the optic nerve is going to be that nerve that then sends the signal to the brain to help you decide what you're looking at or that you're looking at something at all. Where the optic nerve connects to the retina, right, here's our optic nerve, it's going to connect, it's going to have a little disc where it connects. Um, that's nerve tissue 
but not photoreceptors. So that means that if light hits that connecting point, that optic disc, there are no photoreceptors to pick up information. And that's why it's sometimes referred to as a blind spot. Luckily, our fields of visions from both eyes overlap, so we don't notice it. Now I mentioned this big ball right here. This is representing the fluid that we have in our eyes. We actually have two kinds of fluid in our eyes. So the first kind of fluid that we have in our eyes is known as the aqueous fluid, sometimes referred to as the aqueous humor, which is an old medieval word for fluid. Aqueous, you could sort of understand, deals with water, so this is like watery fluid. So this is going to be a watery fluid that is going to be between the iris and the cornea. So right there at the front of the eye, between the iris and the cornea, there's going to be this gap right here. And in that gap is going to be some fluid, just to maintain pressure in the eye, make sure that the cornea is sticking out the way it needs to stick out. The other type of humor, and I'll just find some room over here, is going to be called the vitreous humor. Vit that's what this is representing. Vitreous means thick. So this is a thick fluid. The thick fluid, which is going to be behind the lens. So behind the lens, between the lens and the cornea, you're going to have the vitreous humor. Now, this is going to sit right there, right by the retina. And you can even, in fact, you can even show yourself that you have vitreous humor. Uh, what you can do, and you can do it right after you're done with this video, is if you look at a very bright light, you might see some little specks kind of floating across your field of vision, and as you move your eyes, they kind of float with it, right? Little floaties. Those are actually particles inside your vitreous humor that are casting a shadow on the retina. Right? Now, they're, they're perfectly harmless, they'll settle down over a while, but what you're looking at is you're looking at your own eye goo, your own vitreous humor. Okay? So, remember we have just one more time, we have the lacrimal gland, the lacrimal duct, we have the extrinsic muscles, we have the sclera, the white part, we're going to have the cornea, this curved front window. We're going to have the choroid coat, this brown layer. We're going to have the iris, which is the muscle. The pupil is the hole in the muscle. We're going to have the lens, which is held in place by the ciliary muscles. We're going to have the retina in the back. We're going to have the optic nerve, and we're going to have the aqueous, which is not in the model, and then the vitreous.